Snorting oxycodone, snorting Norcos, snorting Percocets, snorting all those opiates. What is it like? I'll share with you what it's like because I was obsessed with cocaine. I've been sober since 7, 25, 17, and I share my story for anybody out there struggling to know that you can get sober. And I was so obsessed with putting stuff up my nose that if I could not get cocaine, I could easily, especially in the field I was in, get Norco or which hydrocodone and I could get Percocets extremely easy along with oxys. So I didn't really want to take the pills. I did take them at times, but I would crush them up and snort them because that gave me that high. It gave me that mental high. And it was so much of a, even a placebo effect of feeling that. So this is my experience of snorting these. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. What's up guys, my name is Eric and I'm a recovering cocaine and alcoholic addict. I was doing two to three fifths of vodka a day. I was snorting one to two eight balls of cocaine a day. That's 3.5 grams, so almost eight grams of coke a day. Uh, I've been diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, MDD. Those are my diagnoses, level one autism. These aren't excuses, this is just what I've been through. I lost a wife in 2015 to suicide. My dad killed himself in 2017 to suicide. I attempted suicide in 2018, a year after I was sober. I've self-harmed before, I've struggled with a lot, but throughout all of it, I'm still standing and I share my experiences so that you don't feel alone and to help educate anybody who's going through the shit. So what is snorting uh, hydrocodone? What is snorting oxys like um, Percocet? So it all comes in pills. And so what it's like is you get these pills and at least for me, it was different. I was a cocaine addict. I was obsessed with stuff up my nose. I've snorted Xanax, I've snorted Adderall. I've snorted pretty much anything and everything you can. I've snorted meth. So what was it really like with snorting these is you get them in a pill form. So breaking them is a nightmare and you're sitting there trying to bash them. I tell you what, how I used to end up doing it. I, I literally, to the point where it's like a hammer and a bag, just trying to get the shit to crush up because it doesn't break up. It's designed to be a pill. And they're bigger pills, um, especially like a Norco pill, a hydrocodone. I mean, they're they're big pills. So finally get them crushed up and it's it's rocky in chunks. And so what, what I do is I would lay them out and just a line at each pill is one line for me. And I tried to get it as small as I could, but I was always so obsessed. This is how bad of an addict I was. I was so obsessed with getting this up my nose that sometimes I wouldn't even take the time to make sure that it was like powder form and there'd be a bunch of little chunks. And next thing you know, all of a sudden I would do this line and it wasn't like cocaine. It wasn't like anything else. There, there was no great aftertaste. It was like a pill medication, almost aftertaste. And it didn't burn the same in my sinuses and it gets stuck in there. And I'd have these rocks and chunks falling out of my nose. And I sit there trying to crush them up because I'm so obsessed and sick as an addict that I would then snort those back up. And what I would notice though is in about five, 10 minutes max, 10 minutes max, um, and I don't know if it was just the placebo effect or what, but I would get energized. I would get energized as though I just did Coke, even though these have kind of an opposite effect. Um, whenever I've taken um, Percocets or I've taken Hydrocodone, those gave me a lot of energy. Um, Oxycontin actually, whenever I would take it as a pill form, made me very lackadaisical and kind of put me in a little bit of a trance. But no matter what I snorted, I instantly felt high because my brain just had this release of dopamine where it was like the whole process of crushing it, snorting it, release dopamine in my brain, thinking me and tricking me into that I'm high and that it was like cocaine and, and woohoo, I can take on the world. And it was like my chest expanded. And the worst part with these is the fact that all my body pain went away and I didn't ache anymore. I could be on my feet and I wasn't talking in gibberish as much as I would be when I was doing cocaine because at a certain point you overdose with cocaine and your words make sense in your head but not when they're coming out. Uh, these actually kind of in a way slowed me down and I would feel these effects for a good hour to two hours minimum. Um, again, my obsession brain was is after an hour I had to keep chasing the dragon and usually by then I would get cocaine or something else so that I could actually do the drug that I wanted to do. But it would it would gave me a burst of energy. Um, it was a lot of placebo effect in my head. I never had a drip. Um, I felt no pain in my body. I was very talkative. I was very friendly. I was very outgoing all of a sudden. And again, I felt like Superman. I felt indestructible. And all those bad thoughts and everything I was self-medicating for, all those voices went away. And all of a sudden, I could make it through the day. And... The problem is, is our obsessive brain, if you do too much opiates, you do get lackadaisical and it does get that reverse effect where you just become like a slug. And sometimes that would happen because I would do too much uh, because I could not get my drug of choice. So again, 
we in our own brain are so afraid then as an addict of losing that high that we keep doing it. And again, this isn't how the medication is designed to be taken. It's not what it's for. Um, some are water soluble, some aren't. Like even when it comes to Xanax, I would snort Xanax and it's not water soluble, but again, it does eventually digest in you. Um, and it does go into your system where Adderall is um, water soluble. So they all affect you differently. And it was like, man, I could breathe. And it was just energy and just focus in and calmness. And that was the thing is it like calmed my brain. And I wasn't obsessing and worried about getting high or chasing that high. Um, that is what snorting these was like. It was literally like almost doing a line of cocaine. Uh, other than the fact though, I, I didn't feel the high wear off in like 30 minutes, 20 minutes like you do with cocaine. Uh, it doesn't, it didn't have the same drip. It didn't have the same effect even on my lungs. My body didn't feel the same way. I never got the jaw clench. Uh, I never grinded my teeth. I didn't have any kind of paranoia. I just kind of felt, ugh. And this, again, it was this weird screwed up brain of an addict of, well, this is a, uh, opiate. This is something that's over the counter that I can get prescribed to me through a pharmacist. So it's not illegal. And I made all these lies up in my head to justify why I'm doing this. I mean, the biggest problem of all is I can tell you this, if you're watching the video and you have crushed up these pills to snort them, I mean, we are sick people, dude. There is something wrong up here. And, and eventually you have to get to the point of admitting that, that you are sick, that you are struggling. And all you can do is then fight forward to get sober. And how do you get sober? And that's one day at a time. But this is what it was like. And, and again, they weren't my drug of choice, so I never ever really seek them out that much. The, out of all of them, oxycodone, um, Percocets, and um, hydrocodone. Hydrocodone was actually the one that I saw, sought after the most because that one gave me the most energy. I mean, as an addict, we're almost like a chemist in our, our, and we know our body well enough as we're looking for that drug that mirrors or imitates almost our drug of choice the most. And I didn't, I was afraid of meth. I didn't want to do meth. I mean, I, I was like a sane, insane addict. And I think a lot of us addicts are. So I was searching for the drugs that kind of made it feel like cocaine the most. If you're out there struggling, I understand. I share my story so that you know you're not alone, that, that you can relate. And, and if I can get sober, you can get sober. I've been sober since 7, 25, 17. I literally had a breakdown and decided I, I have to change my life. Uh, down below, I have links to NA and AA. They're great resources out there to at least get started, man, and get something, get support, and start going after chasing the sobriety and getting the sobriety. And it all comes from your heart and your head and your soul, man, of like, I want this. You have to want it bad enough. And you're going to get sober one of two ways. You're going to get sober while you're alive or you're going to get sober while you overdosed and died. And that's the reality of it. I mean, I, I've been through so much that if I'm still standing, so can you. And that's why I share is just testimony to anybody going through it. Knowing that you can does get better. And if you want to get sober, it all begins with just looking at everybody around you and go, man, I'm an addict and I need help. I lie, I manipulate, I cheat, I steal. I've ruined my life and I need help. I need help. And people will help you because they're watching you deteriorate in front of you. So if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, hit the like and subscribe button. Comment down below. The more that we share our stories, the more that anybody out there struggling knows that they're not alone and that it does get better and that it is worth it. So don't give up. Just keep going at it. And it gets a lot easier, believe me.